Fresh, flexible composite mesh. Five weeks to selection Sunday. Creighton in the light blue. Seton Hall wins the opening tip. Thanks for joining us tonight on CBS Sports Network, the last of five games on this day. They call him Mamu. His full name, Sandro Mamu Kelosvili. And he nails the triple to start things off. Well, he talked about the balance that he brings along with power, but he also has the ability to go outside, stretch the defense. He had a lot of time to size that one up. Seton Hall not known for its three-point shooting. It's Creighton, one of the top three-point shooting teams in the country. But Seton Hall can make a few as well. And they've got one of the best players in the Big East. He has the ball right now, Miles Powell. Talk to Coach Willard, as you see right there, one of the keys is going to be turnovers. A young Seton Hall team has got to make sure that they keep an eye on the score, the situation, and more importantly, value the basketball. It was Martin Kroppel with the bucket for Creighton. They are going to play faster tonight than they did on Wednesday at Villanova because they have Alexander back in the lineup. So Creighton's going to look to run and pretty much every opportunity for Greg McDermott in his ninth season. His last win was his 200th at Creighton. You can see just on that last play a little bit of the approach that Creighton wants to take. I should say Seton Hall, they want to drive the basketball into the heart of the Creighton defense whenever the opportunity presents itself. Caleb Joseph tried the alley-oop to call, but it was disrupted. Good defense involves anticipation. Seton Hall back line, seeing that play develop and interjecting. on the inside that Seton Hall can get as far as scoring just gravy right now a dominant predominantly perimeter oriented team they can supplement with inside scoring that'd be huge there's Kroppel who's playing really good ball of late offensive rebound Seton Hall dodges a couple bullets those are makeable shots and you normally see Kroppel make <laughs> Whenever your big boy can get you some chance opportunities, that is a huge plus for the home team right now. Off to a huge start because they're out hustling the visiting team. I'm talking with Kevin Willard, the head coach of Seton Hall, before the game, and he was saying, We just don't have any inside presence. And for four years, they had, but they haven't had it this season. Adrian Delgado taking his and applying his wares to the NBA now. Both of these teams reloading this season. Young teams, and both coaches told us before the game, they didn't think they would be in this position. They didn't think they would have a chance to play their way into the NCAA tournament. That was Davion Mintz misfiring on the three. Creighton fourth in the country in field goal percentage at 50%. Miles Kale missing, and Crumple the rebound, and Creighton looking to run. No uncontested shots. Everything's with a hand up. See, all right now, facing resistance. Well, Crompo can do it all inside and out. Had 13 and 10 last game out. And Creighton's within three here in the early going of this one. Crompo, a product of the Impact Academy in Florida. Before coming over from Slovenia, after it's just a over from Slovenia. Great pick by Quincy McKnight with the left hand. Beautifully done. Those opportunities Coach Willard talked to you and I about before the game. They don't want to necessarily run for 40 minutes, but they will pounce whenever the opportunity presents itself. A little careless ball handling from the Creighton team. Also said that we won't see much full court pressure from Seton Hall either. They sprint back and want to defend the three point shot. Speaking of, Balak. Misfiring. Mitch Ballack, the left-hander, fourth in the conference in three-point percentage at 45%. That one wasn't close. A good challenge late. See the 
ball pressure that Creighton wants to put on you. You've got to go by that. That's Paolo. Chest bump after he laid it in. To say he's pretty good about his game right now and able to get all the way to the rim. Crumple able to hustle it down. Mintz draws the foul. They get a trip on Miles Kales. And that brings us to our first. A lot of good moments where they've been able to pounce. And I think really catch Creighton off guard. And that has carried the day thus far, this seven point lead early on. Told us he's so pleased with this team, a hard working group. And he thinks if they can get to nine and nine in conference play, that they'll be in the tournament. That would mean a five and three finish in the regular season. And of course, you never know what's going to happen at Madison Square Garden in the Big East tournament. Seton Hall has shown they can beat anybody at Madison Square Garden, knocking off Kentucky in the non conference. That's Tyshawn Alexander off the mark. And that one off the hand of Ballard. McKnight keeps the dribble. A break dance move. Nice little wide receiver in the NFL kind of move there along the sideline, keeping both feet in bounds. Uses the screen and again with the left hand. Count it. He has been so good, and just whenever the opportunity presents itself, you can see both defenders anticipating he drives right, kind of dummies that screen and roll, goes all the way left to the hole, and the Creighton defenders forced to have to scramble and recover. Samson Froling, who just checked in, the freshman for Creighton, looked like he got caught up in his own guy. And now Seton Hall a chance to take a full-digit lead. Couldn't ask for anything better if you're Kevin Willard. That being said, this is a battle-tested Creighton team on the road in particular. They're not just going to sit here early on because things haven't gotten their way from the beginning. The nice find inside is Samson Froling for his first bucket of the game. When he rolls on that pick and roll and all the attention goes to the ball handler and they kind of leave him. He just finds a spot behind the defense, a nice pass where no one else can get it. Easy catch and finish. Jared Roden short on that. The rebound was by Lamar Gill, but he had it poked away. Catching that behind him, able to play strong enough to hold on to the ball while the defenders are grabbing at it. That was a snow cone <laughs> catch. Kill it. Seven foot two out of Jamaica. Just his eighth free throw attempt of the season, and here's that resume for Seton Hall. They're in the tournament right now, according to our bracketologist, Jerry Palm, who we're going to hear much more from at the half. The reason they're in, still, even after this two and six, eight game swoon, is those key wins in the non conference against Kentucky and at Maryland. Well, you certainly, that one raises a lot of Good. eyebrows and draws a lot of attention. Got a chance, I remember seeing that game live earlier on in the season at MSG. That was a heck of a performance, and they just hung in there for the duration, showed some mental toughness to hold it. It out. Deep by Gill to just stand straight up, use that plane of verticality. Proper use the head oh. fake and the hammer. <laughs> That's how you get back at him. Offensively, at first, things don't succeed. Put your head down and drive it to the cup. Here's 
just that nice play again, the high low, and you can see that it's five around zero, which basically tells you avenues for drives. You see no one in the lane, late defender coming over to help. Crumple with two. And he is no stranger to the rim. That's his 48th dunk of the season. Came into this day tied with Zion Williamson in dunks. That puts it in perspective, doesn't it? Crazy. And we haven't even finished one season yet. If you're, if you're Zion Williamson, that's crazy. And this young man crumple too. That's amazing. Creighton will retain possession after the Joseph three-point miss. Crumple's been really effective of late. He shoots the three, but man, when you've got more dunks than Zion, <laughs> you're doing something. And more dunks <laughs> than you had in four years at Duke. <laughs> I love that. Hey, listen, I'm happy to be met and they spelled the name right. Thanks to everybody in the truck. Ala Abdel Nabidi, <laughs> former Duke center, Duke great in the late 80s. Ball on Crumple. It's four turnovers for the Jays. And this is Creighton's resume. Now, Jerry Palm does not have them in the tournament. I spoke with him earlier this week. He says that they've got a lot of work to do compared to Seton Hall because they don't have a really, really good win yet. This would be a quad one win, though, and a step in the right direction. Certainly would. And that early <laughs> win in the Caymans against Clemson looked really good back then, but Clemson has since struggled. Ranked 16 at the time, no longer. Another dunk from Crumple and the nice dish for Avion Mintz. I wonder if Zion knows what's going on here in Newark tonight. Someone should inform him. I think he's all right with the win, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> he go to Virginia a little earlier. I don't think the dunks are on his mind right now. Anthony Nelson has it stripped away by Alexander. Ahead to Vince. Pulling up from the elbow. Rebound to Connor Kesho. Crumble again uses the half -hand. Blocking foul. Late signal. But a blocking foul called on Miles Powell. Looks like where his feet were. And whether or not they were planted. Well, we've already got two dunks from Martin Crumple. And the Blue Jays working their way back in it. Down three. A heartbreaking losses. Creighton, of course, in overtime at Villanova. And our apologies to Creighton fans. We realize that you're 0-2 on CBS Sports Network this season, and both of those lost him in overtime. Martin Crumple, though, trying to get a win on CBS Sports Network. He has nine of the 11 points so far. And one more coming on. Better not have jinxed him. <laughs> to me, Crumple looks like a junior who's playing like a senior. Yeah. Uh, he, he looks poised out there. He also, what I'm noticing is he's also got like a competitive drive. You see him attacking, going at people, not allowing himself to be pushed out of position. Playing with a little chip on his shoulder. I like that as a big. 11 points already. They force six Seton Hall turnovers. It is an 8-0 run by the Jays. Nice drop stop. And McKnight off the mark on the three. The rebound to Connor Cashaw. who played 39 minutes last game. He came into that game averaging under 10 minutes a game. Creighton was gassed after that overtime loss to Villanova. Didn't do much practicing at all between now and then. Life on the road. Second forgiving. Middle of this three game road trip. Got more roadie coming up. Another chance for the Blue Jays. There was one light blue shirt amongst five white ones. So Kevin Willard imploring his team to block out. And I thought before the shot. On Wednesday night, CBS Sports Network brings you a triple header. And it includes these Creighton Blue Jays in another Big East battle as they take on Xavier at 8.30. And out west, it's Boise State and Fresno State. We get you started with St. Louis at George Washington. See if Creighton can make Seton Hall pay for the second and third chance opportunities. Shot clock down to seven. Cashaw fades away. Oh, oh my! That's a shot. 
pretty good defense. And you see Gatchaw with the fadeaway. Getting nothing but net. Powell trying to stop the bleeding. Can't. Enzi taps it back to him, though. So Seton Hall gets a second chance opportunity. And that's a charge. Powell just a little out of control on that Seton whole Hall exchange. Out. Thought the initial jump shot was too quick. And then here you can see how he's trying to drive to the basket. Crumple gets there early before Powell. Oh, that's a good call. And that's a big call because that's number two on Miles Powell. He'll take a seat. What's your stance on some coaches when a player picks up two, they sit him for the rest of the half. You can't do that with Powell, can you? No, I don't think you can, but I would sit him down now. Let him a couple trips down the court go by. Referees will forget about him, so to speak. But right now, he seems to be fresh on the official's mind. Get him out of the game. Alexander out to cash off for three. Mamo the rebound. Seton Hall running. Had a guy up ahead. No one saw him. Foul called on that shot attempt. Michael Inzi was the one who was out and running. There's that play again. See them getting into the painted area. That's McKnight with the drive. Picking up the foul. And that's their first point in five minutes and 20 seconds. Seton Hall built a nine point lead in the early going. Brayton came roaring back with a 10-0 run. McKnight, 67% at the line this season. Kevin Willard wants him to spend more time in the gym, get some more free throws up. Well, when you get to a point like McKnight, where you know you're going to be playing with three games, big minutes, and you're going to be out on the floor, you don't want to be giving points back. And down the stretch, you want to be in the game, making your free throws, not being taken out because you can't. Well, let's just say this. He may not have been completely truthful with this. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at that play again. He has so much for laying back, allowing Creighton to dictate some tempo. The double team ready to pounce. Yeah, I think McDermott wanted a foul on Quincy McKnight, who kind of bumped into him and knocked him over, causing that trap. Still working the officials is Coach McDermott. McKnight almost lost it himself, and Crumple forces the turnover. Here it is. Gets the rebound, got it poked out of bounds. It'll stay with the Creighton Blue Jays. Good ball pressure being applied by the Blue Jays at the top of their key. And that's really kind of throwing Seton Hall. As we take a look at that exchange, this is after the turnover occurred. Shot goes up, Crumple gets the rebound, and then it's out of bounds off of the flexion. Fans weren't happy with that call as Caleb Joseph checks out for Creighton. Valak having a few smiles with fans. Valak comes out with the rebound. Six points off turnovers for the Jays. That's how they were able to turn the momentum around. Down 14 to 5 in the first five minutes. with the rejection. And make that count. If nothing else, you come away with the foul. In a perfect world, the foul in the end one, but you've got to come away with something. Seton Hall has missed last six shots on the floor. That one was in and out. Enzi, a great offensive ball. And the free throw line. That's exactly what we talked about the last trip down. Came away with nothing this time. Getting to the line is Enzi. Hard work being paid off, being rewarded, I should say, and paying off. There's that exchange again. Shot goes up, first one to it. Two, three jumps to multiple jumps from Enzi. That gets him to the line. He beat Crumple on that. Already four rebounds for Michael Enzi. He's already earned his undergrad working on his MBA. Senior for Seton Hall, one of the rare seniors that we're going to see on the court tonight. These are two very young teams. Seton Hall losing so much. Excuse me, from five guys leaving last year. Of course, we talked about touched on Adrian Delgado being the main person people recruit. That's a big transition for any program. 
both of these two teams. Losing a corner. Both head coaches very happy with where they're at. They've got a shot. Steve Hall, of course, not happy with the who wins in the last eight games. But the winner of this game is going to have a real good opportunity. And then they face each other again in a week in Omaha. Of exchange by garnering that rebound. The longer you allow second and third chance opportunities, the more taxing it's going to be on your defense. Give them a break. Kevin Willard doesn't talk a lot in the huddles. He was telling us before the game. He usually waits about a, a full minute before he says anything. He likes to sit next to his players, let them talk amongst themselves, and then go from there. What'd you think of that? Good coaches normally do that. It allows ownership by the players. After all, it is their team. And the fortunes of their team are directly tied into how they play. Seton Hall has missed its last nine shots. Creighton has missed its last seven shots. It looks like a foul on Gill, but they didn't call it. The Hall with numbers and McNutt brings it in. No time getting it up for it. Had to be weird for Creighton fans to watch that game against Villanova on Wednesday. Played the exact opposite of how they normally do. But what a game plan from Greg McDermott. Had a chance to win that game in the last possession. Lost it in overtime. You've got to play to your personnel. You can't play with the team you wish you had out there. You've got to work with what you've got. Another second chance opportunity. And it was another guard that got the rebound. Davion Mitz got the rebound. And Christian Bishop, the freshman, is going to get free throws. Well, this is how the defense leads to good offense. You see the miss down one end of the floor. Mamu Kalashvili gets it, and he plays point guard. Finds a streaking McKnight on the wing for the easy two. Seeing the hall running when they can. And McKnight needing to step up here with Miles Powell out of the game with two fouls. He's coming back in, though. 6.32 to play in the first half with two fouls. Is there any way you can try to attack a guard and get a third foul on him? Drive. That's the best way you do it is if you kind of isolate him and then you just drive it. And when you make sure you're driving, you're going right into his body, right into his chest, trying to initiate the contract contact and see whether or not you can go the official into a foul. Ten offensive rebounds now for Creighton. That's a lot. Exactly what Willard was talking about. Coach Willard in the huddle that we had him mic'd up for. Miles Kale, short. Basketball, he was off and running, catching Gill off guard. And he takes a seat with two, with 6.03 to go here in the first half. Great defense. That was Powell. Got his hand on it and forces the turnover. Great denial from Seton Hall. You can see how they took away the pass underneath, and that's where Creighton wanted to go. No options for the Blue Jays. McKnight for three. We had a good angle on it. You could tell that was going wide, right? Some indecision from Seton Hall, and that's going to cost them because Caleb Joseph gets to the free throw line. The C's parted. You've got to see that if you're Quincy McKnight, you cannot allow that to happen. Stop the ball. You take a look at 
Well, and Crumple, what he's been able to do, that's a big guy with active hands leading to that steal. Defense leading to good offense. And then here, five around zero, lanes wide open for a drive. He goes right by Gill for two. Joseph short on that free throw. He was at the line with three free throws in the final seconds of that loss in overtime to Villanova. Made just one of three to tie the game. And then Creighton went on to lose in overtime. He also had a shot at the end of regulation, could have won it. But he was forced into that position as a playmaker because Tyshawn Alexander was unable to play. And of course, the injury to Marcus Zagorowski as well. Got to have a makeshift lineup. And you're basically an ad lib and touch. What I meant by tough shot was that's a borderline bad shot. But that being said, since it goes in, it's a great shot. Take a look at the pass off. He almost double clutches it in midair, absorbing the contact and then raining that long distance dialing. Now that is a, a call that the officials are supposed to be getting away from. The leg kick out that initiates contact. That has been a, a point of emphasis this season to not board an offensive player for kicking his leg out and drawing a foul. I think that's probably what Greg McDermott was saying. Initiating crew of Mike Roberts, Tim Cloggerty, and Nathan Farrell. Jefferson, Mintz behind the bat, stutter step, Joseph a wide open three. Caleb Joseph from Cushing Academy in Nashua, New Hampshire. Stepping right into that one in rhythm. Good patience from the Blue Jays. Powell misses, but Seton Hall's going to get another chance. Seton Hall now returning the favor and getting some second chance opportunities. Making the Blue Jays defend a little longer. Enzi. What happens when you have to defend for more than 35 seconds? You all of a sudden start getting tired and fatigued. And then your defense starts to collapse and the offense becomes a little easier to score. Well, too much muscle there from Martin Crumple. I said 35 seconds, I meant 30 seconds. <laughs> He got close, great moves, but may maybe he should have dunked it for his 50th dunk of the season. <laughs> well, he's certainly adept at it as you'd see the ball go out of bounds. But Crumple has been a presence inside that the Seton Hall Pirates cannot ignore. Bad turnover, though, for Seton Hall. Gives it right back to Creighton. Just joining us, this is a major, major swing game for both of these teams. Sitting at four and six, he jumbled Big East. The winner will be tied for third. The loser could be tied for last. Kroppel makes it a one-point game. That's good. That time, stepping right into that. He's just spacing the floor because of his height and because he stretches out the opposing team. The big guy, Mamokush, really having to come out and play him. Tough assignment. Kroppel now has 14. Great pass to Enzi inside, but he can't finish. It's the second time Enzi's come up with nothing on the inside. You've got to at least come up with a foul, if not the foul and bucket. Offensive foul on the inside, going on Christian Bishop. Crumple has been a force early on. He's been able to do it in transition off of his defense, and there, training the three for a one-point lead. The tournament starts, but you certainly like starting the conversation because, Chris, that means the tournament is just right around the corner. Five weeks from tomorrow is Selection Sunday, and both of these teams <laughs> are in the running for an at-large bid if we can get things together here at the end of the season. I mean, if somebody gets hot and finishes third in the Big East, it's going to be hard to keep that team out, and it would mean some really nice victories. Well, for Creighton, have a chance at a quad one win here. You mentioned five weeks to the Selection Sunday. I know another guy in New York who's been counting down since last Selection Sunday, that being John Rothstein in New York. Kyle hits the three. 11 second chance points. 
You love that out of a stop action where you draw up a play. You love that your team kind of executes precisely. Main guy knocking it down. Hey. Foul on Anthony Nelson. Fans thought he had all ball. He may have had all ball, but there was some contact on the bottom down low. Take a look at it again. As he goes up, there's absolutely some contact there. Good call by the official. Creighton not shooting well at all, but quite frankly, neither team is. Creighton over 50% on the season, but barely halfway there tonight. 27% from the field, but those second chance points have kept them in this game. Not at full strength. And parts of this road trip will get their best player back. Seton Hall is off to a good start. A lot of things that these Blue Jays have had to overcome, yet they find themselves right now very much in this ballgame because of the way they've been hustling. Tail taking Valak off the dribble. That was. It's a bad shot because I don't think you had the one guy anticipating that shot as a rebounder. The rest of the team didn't even know it was going up. Oh, the rebound. He has nine points. Had a four-point play several minutes ago. See how much attention Powell gets as soon as he crosses half court and does so. Not much of an interior game for Seton Hall. Michael Enzi's made some plays in there, but too strong on the jump up. Good inside of the stuff from the freshman Christian Bishop. Gotta wonder how does Bishop beat everyone else down the floor? Lovely ball handling from Mintz there. Able to find a window. Nelson open for three. And they're taking the ball out of Powell's hands and almost forcing guys like Nelson, anybody but Powell, so to speak, to knock down some shots. Bishop again, beautifully done. And a quick timeout from Kevin Willard. Creighton takes the lead back to back buckets. Reminds me of Anthony Davis from the New Orleans Pelicans. Same thing, four points to Kentucky. Played all guard and then just sprouted one summer and had to contend with an extra inch. Seconds to play in the first half. But it's been the story of Seton Hall all season long trying to find a Robin to Powell's backhand, and the youngsters have been inconsistent. You see them scrambling all over the floor. That was great hustle from both teams, but Mintz in particular to save this possession. Shot clock under 10. Joseph way out to Valley. Crawford's got to do something. See how far the Blue Jays had the high rate running their offense. That's a good sign for the Hall of Defenders. They're slowing up a bit, working a little half court offense. Tail for three. And it was off Seton Hall. It's Creighton basketball with a 16 second difference shot clock and game clock. Mamo Kalishbili trying to come out and get that second possession. Not for a lack of hustling. I applaud you. I mean, most announcers just go with Mamu. <laughs> you've been going with the full last name. Mamu Kelishvili. When you've got a name like Abdul Nabi, you respect. That's a big point. The hard to pronounce great. <laughs> it's the least I could do. Alexander. I like that. Creighton went for a two for one. You don't see that a lot from college coaches. And they got it into their main guy, too, so they increased their chances. It just didn't fall, but I like their approach. Now there's about a seven second difference. Reynolds the extra pass. Roden. Trump will be about with 20 seconds to go here in the first half. Creighton could elect to call a timeout. You can't take all four with you to the second, but they're not going to. You lose it, so to speak. They're going to trust in their players. Alexander away from the screen. And turns it over. Kale from 70. And 
Seton Hall, led by as many as nine, takes a two-point lead into the halftime break. Coming up, it's Adam Zucker, Swing Cash, John Rothstein, and Bracketologist down two. And these fans here at Seton Hall, no stranger to close games. They've had eight games decided by one possession this season, have the Pirates. They are five and three in those eight games. And they get it into Crawford. A quick pass out to Davion Mintz. Allender still hasn't scored. 0 for 5. He's swinging it from one side to the other, getting that defense to move. That's a good look. Could make it. That's a charge. Miles Kale drew it. That off hand, Chris, is something that a lot of youngsters do nowadays. It's always been illegal. It's never been allowed. But yet somehow you see a lot of youngsters using that off arm to create some space. No brainer for the official. Cashel's a senior. He should know better. Well, and it's done on the NBA level as well, too. So it's not just that we're picking on these collegiate guys. It's oh, screen hard. Knight looks like he traveled of two minds. Didn't know what he wanted to do once he got the ball. Clock under 10. The runner off the mark. A late charge call. So Cashaw got called for a charge on one end, draws it on the other, and that's three on Miles Powell. A little out of control. We've seen Powell at times be too quick for his own good. Just elevate, go straight up and down. No need to start fading from side to side. Right now, if opponents are waiting for those moves. Still no scoring in the second half. As the shooting woes continue for both of these teams, Creighton at 27% for the game, Seton Hall at 33. Kale steps into a deep one. Oh, yes. That's a three-point basket. Right into that one in rhythm. Sizing that one up. Where's the deep? Where Creighton's having to operate. Way far, far from their basket. Cashaw Euro stepped it, but he doesn't get the benefit of the Euro step. They say the pivot foot changed and it's a turnover. Step. That wasn't a Euro step. Here's another continent. And it is Seton Hall by five here in the early going of the second half. In a very important game, the winner moves to five and six in a tie for third in the Big East. The loser will fall out of the top six, and that's important because the top six get a bye to the quarterfinals of the Big East tournament. Alexander missed last game against Villanova, injured his knee in practice, didn't really practice at all in the days leading up to this game. I'm sure if he was going to be able to play. Just like the rest of us, living day to day, right, Chris? Aren't we all? That's number one on Michael N. And Miles Powell's going to take a seat with three fouls in favor of Chabot Reynolds. Go have a seat and just assess how the speed of this game is going, how the officials are calling it, and when you're ready and your number's called, check back in. Come back in, a player ready to finish off this game for your team. Well, the, the scoring pace is not favoring Creighton right now. Sure, they're down five, yes, but their magic number has been 75. They haven't won a game in over a year in which they scored under 75 points. Shot clock running out. A miracle that that hit the rim. Seton Hall has them right where they want. Still haven't reached 30 at the Blue Jays. McKnight passed up a three. Reynolds! That's just what Kevin Rose told us. A number of different guys have stepped up throughout the season to complement Powell's scoring. It's a foul on Quincy McKnight. Oh, about two points. It's an awful lot of argument with the official. 
officials right now. Just accept the foul and move on. Take a look at that last exchange, swinging it from top to the left corner. Ready to shoot, knocking it down. A lot of chirping going on back and forth right now between players and officials and just play the game. Trompel in and out. That was number three, by the way, on Quincy McKnight. So he and Miles Powell have three fouls. Nice shot. McKnight really forcing it. On uh, another foul called on McKnight. That's four. When you play out of control, bad things happen. You can see him there forcing the issue. Knows he's missed it now. He's trying to get himself a second possession. Problem is, there's a defender there. He was reaching in, too. Slapping at the ball. He was asking for it. Baseline official has to call that. And now an important moment for Creighton. Down eight. But Seton Hall in foul trouble. Two of their best players, you could argue, their two best players with foul trouble. Quincy Knight might be the number two to Miles Powell on this team. Nince has the big man Mamu on him. Oh my God! Missed it. He couldn't believe it. Frustration starting to set in as well. That was halfway. Mince though has to keep his head cool. Ten. Great job. Oh, the largest lead of the game for Seton Hall is ten. Able to get all the way to the cup. Nice soft release with that left hand. Oh, that looked like a walk. Alexander got away with it. Mince still can't buy a hoop. He is 0 for 6 from the floor. Got to look to drive. When the shot's not falling, you as a player have to adjust. Put it on the floor. Izzy got it blocked by Crumpel, but corrals it. And it by his hands up. It is now the same. And Crumpel says timeout. An eye on for the Memphis Tiger team. Well, it was a two-point game at the half. Creighton actually took a late first half lead, and since then all Seton Hall. What have you seen from them to start the second half? It's a lot like they started the game when they took a nine-point lead. The word is energy, and right now they are just outclassing the Big Blue Jays with energy, but there's a knockdown jumper to hopefully get them back in this ball game. They've got to match their energy. Yeah, they needed that bounce. Martin Crompel now has 70 points to lead all scorers. In fact, He's the only player in double figures, but he's going to be the only scorer for Creighton tonight. Mamu misses the three, and Creighton a chance to string a couple buckets together. Not a bad shot, but I'd like to see perhaps milk that clock a little bit more, get more time out of that 30-second clock. Alexander still can't buy a bucket. He's over, and Creighton is down nine. And the encouraging thing is that you've got to figure that trend is going to come to an end soon. That simply can't continue. And when it does finish and they're starting to turn their fortunes around, you figure you're still within striking distance. This game is far from out of reach for the Creighton Blue Jays. You just want to be, as Jim Valvano, the late great Jim Valvano would say, in a position to win down the stretch. Well, they do have fouls in their favor. Miles Powell with three fouls. And Quincy McKnight is on the bench with four fouls. Alexander nearly forcing a turnover. Shot clock to 10. Anthony Nelson picks up a screen from Mamu. Inside to Enzi. And it's a turnover. Call the travel. Well, this season, over 50% from the floor. They're 9-1 and one when they shoot over 50%. They would have to make every shot from here on out and then maybe get it to overtime <laughs> to get it to 50% in this game. They're 11 of 43 from the field. You sound down on them. <laughs> well, like you said, it's, it's bound to turn around. And if it does, they will be right there. Well, that's what Coach McDermott is hoping for. This can't continue. Rumble's been the only one. Shot clock to three. Shot clock from behind by Powell. And then Powell got it poked away. Seton Hall basketball. I don't blame Powell for wanting to pounce. As you take a look at this, that's a great block from behind without the foul on the taller player. And then you can see how the defender comes in and just charged. That was as well. Crumple getting it in his pocket pick. Oh. 
Roden swings it over in the corner, wide open. Mama is too strong. Crumple inside, gets it to go. Post up. Just found some space, sort of like against his own defensive football. You find space between two defenders and you just sit. That's what Crumple did. Good find from his teammate in the perimeter. He has 19. The next highest point total for a Creighton player is Christian Bishop with six. But Alexander was able to contribute. This is a totally different proposition. Caleb Joseph out to Alexander, and he's finally on the board. <laughs> as we're under 13. Timeout, the quick 8-0 run. Creighton, and now it's not just Martin Crumple. He's getting a little bit of help. Powell left to beat. Seems a little rushed today, this Powell. In too much of a hurry. Hasn't scored yet in the second half. Nine points for the game. Reminded of what Coach John Wooden would say. Be quick, but don't hurry. Oh, it's goaltending there as Bishop got his hand up on the net. And now Creighton a chance to cut it even closer. They were down by 12 about three minutes ago. Balak still hasn't made a bucket either. He's 0 for 4. Rumble from 16. It's a two-point game. Good ball movement and that flash to the foul line by Crumple. He knew what he wanted to do with it as he got it. Catch and shoot. All off the mark, Crumple the rebound. Good shot by Powell, but he had the drive well, after a convincing pick. Didn't either. Bishop inside one on one. No help defense. And an offensive foul. We got a ball game at the Prudential Center. Creighton roaring back on a 10-0 run. Three fouls. They want to get him to have to go guard the post and try to pick up that fourth foul. Get him involved as we take a look at Mr. Powell there, discussing things with the officials, but get him involved in a pick and roll with the big. And then when they switch that, Take him, you being the big, take Powell down into the post and with three fouls, you probably expect a little resistance from Mr. Powell. This Seton Hall team is at its best when Miles Powell scores 25 plus. They're 8 0 when he gets to the 25 point mark, which is nine points so far tonight. He's got three fouls and Quincy McKnight has four. He's got the ball out there with 11 minutes to go. Hale with the sweet step back. I don't know he had that kind of game in him. That was me right there. Joseph backing down McKnight, who has four, so he just has to let Crumple stuff it home. 50th dunk of the season. He's got 23, matching a career high. It's remarkable because when we first came to the arena and we were told about the number of dunks, you're saying to yourself, but how have I not heard about this kid? How is that possible? Well, you know what? You watch him for as long as we have right now and you see exactly why it's done because he's quick off the floor. Well, it, it wasn't pretty, but it'll work for Seton Hall. Quincy McKnight with those four miles scoring. But it's going to be a challenge on defense for Seton Hall because they're going to want these guards and they're going to work ball screens to try to get these guards matched up on the inside. Alexander now looks like he's a little engaged offensively. What does he do when he pulls up? Bishop, the offensive rebound. And Alexander steps into another. There's a little sigh of relief after that one falls in. The shoulders slump down as if to say, thank goodness I finally got one to go. He started 0 for 6. But he's made a couple threes here of late. McKnight missing, but Kenzie the rebound. He brought it down and got it stripped away. That's the first part of the saying was he brought it down to where the little guys can get a hand on it, and that's exactly what happened. He popped it up. 
Bishop on the seven foot two. Seven. How about that on Romaro Gill? Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. What Bishop was trying to do is create some space just to get that shot up. He got a lucky for it is bad. A 17 to five run from the Creighton Blue Jays to tie it at 46. Bad shot. He's really just rushing things now, Powell. Almost forcing it. I don't, know, I don't know why. He's three for eight. Bishop for three. Way off the mark. But a push called underneath. And it looks like it's on seat ball. Fumble being so active right now. I think he may have caught one of the beats off guard. And then, so they don't get embarrassed by his hustle. They had the foul. on the shot clock. Gill exits. Davion Mintz in the game again for great. He's 0 for 8. The last time he was on the court, Creighton was down 12. Now it's tied up and the Blue Jays with a chance to take a lead. Oh, what great hustle from Powell. Saves it in. Joseph. That's a killer if you're Powell. Saved it back in, but you saved it to a guy who's ready to shoot, and he makes you pay. The lead is three. It's the largest of the game for Creighton. A 20 to 5 run. McKnight throws it away. Bodies hitting the floor. Mintz back to Alexander. He's short. Offensive rebound. Cashaw lets it slip away. Alexander's shooting woes continue. Take a look at that last exchange again. There's the hustle from Powell. And get right back to the Creighton player. That's Joseph with the knockdown, Caleb Joseph. So is that, that's not exactly saving it underneath your own basket, but it is saving it back toward your basket? It is. It absolutely is. There's nothing wrong with saving it to the other end of the floor. Powell still off the mark, three for nine. But Kale comes out of there with it. Another quick one from Powell. Resetting the offense for Kevin Willard. Both of these teams in the hunt for an at-large bid, but they're probably on the wrong side of the bubble right now. They need a win. Ah. Joseph with the box out and the rebound. Philly, he, he's trying to keep the contact. Referees aren't going to reward that with a foul. You've got to go into the contact, especially as a big. No room to be cute in there. Mintz over to Joseph. Caleb Joseph. Thank you, pardon, Christian Bishop. Gives Creighton a five-point lead. And he's been huge tonight, now in double fierce. Drop step along the baseline, a nice little step through, uses the rim as protection. Nifty move from Mr. Bishop. McKnight went in there and used a good head fake, but it seemed like all he wanted to do was draw contact. At the number of dunks he's got, quick off the floor. The judge is wavering. They're going to put the over under at, at two and a half dunks right now. Wow. He might have three. Zion's paying attention, I would imagine. Yeah, came into the day tied with Zion Williamson for 47 dunks this season. Creighton was down 12 early in this second half. Shot clock winding down to six. Alexander missing and Powell the rebound. How does Seton Hall get Powell going? I would imagine that, listen, get him down into the block and have him coming off with some down screens. Right now, I don't like the fact that he's starting the offensive exchange with the ball in his hands because look at that tough shot. I know that was halfway through. That's a tough shot from Powell. And he's looking over at Kevin Willard frustrated because that hasn't gone in. Shots aren't falling. Coaches will tell you, put the ball on the floor. Get to the cut. Well, he's just three for 10 from the floor. Two of eight from three point range. And in the second half, Creighton is picking it up. And again, another offensive bound, another second chance opportunity. Creighton with the 
16 offensive rebounds now. That's twice their season average. Mintz lost it. Here comes McKnight. And now the crowd will get into it a little bit. Seton Hall down three, five and a half to go. Actually, turnover playing right into Seton Hall's hands. You've got to make sure you get a shot up. Alec off the mark. Grateful by Christian Bishop. It's a jump ball. Possession arrow sends it over to Seton Hall. Watch Bishop here. His shot goes up, loose ball right in the middle, a couple of different jumps, and then watch how badly he wants this. First one, two is Mr. Bishop. That's how hard you're supposed to play and how bad you want it. We told you Seton Hall plays a lot of tight games. Five and three in one possession games this season. It's a one possession game right now. McKnight has four fouls. Powell has three. McKnight, great adjustment, but can't get the roll. He's been better off. I know he was trying to get off in traffic, but get to the line. Absorb some of that contact. Looks like he was trying to avoid the contact and get it up. Alexander for three. Oh, that's big. Well, it's not for a lack of opportunities. That's the great thing about Tyshawn Alexander is he knows he's going to get looks. You just got to start knocking them down. McKnight left alone, but he's not going to take that three. Face guarding Powell, too, not allowing him to get the ball back. Manu, jump stop. it up. Normally he likes to push it up, but right now he likes where his team is up six with under four to go. Alexander. Big. Crumple off the mark from three, and he was wide open. It was a, a big missed shot. It would have upped the lead to nine. And a sarcastic cheer from the fans. It's the third team foul on Creighton. The Blue Jays once down 12, now up full four. Game summary brought to you by AT&T, and the difference in the game right now, second chance points. The Blue Jays 17 second chance points, Pirates just eight, and that is not part of Creighton's game. They are not known as a offensive rebounding team, but tonight, that's how they've taken the lead. Last game, a loss by Seton Hall, 70 to 68 at Butler. They did not allow a single second chance point. You give it to Creighton. A lot of hustle. Especially the way the game started. They're leaning towards Seton Hall, and they could have easily folded, but emboldened by their inside play by Crample, by Bishop, and then Alexander being heard from. Powell getting to the rim, and that's what you wanted to see from him. Get to the rim, get some free throws, and get some confidence. See that drive? Crample coming over, trying to stay vertical, but unable to avoid that contact. Powell with just nine points. That's his first point of the second half. This is a guy that is second in the conference in scoring this season, 22 a game. He's had four games of 30 plus. He even went for 40 in one game. Certainly has the ability to score in bunches. Plays a huge role in their fortunes this season. Does Powell a little 2-2-1 pickup by the Pirates? He forced a turnover on the press in the first half. from Alexander. Wow. Oh, such a quick bang bang play. Take a look at this. There's the steal. And then he's going for the rim. And then how about that from behind Alexander getting a piece of power. 
Braden struggling with this pressure. Kevin Wilder told us before the game he doesn't like to press because he feels his team is a little bit too young. You're passing, you don't want lazy passes, and you're not passing off the back foot. You want to step into your passes and make sure they're crisp. And if you're catching the ball, you come to the ball, shorten the length of those passes. Maybe on Mintz, 0 for 9 from the floor. That one rejected by Enzi. Seton Hall ball. Enzi, that's just rude. One hand on that rejection would have been enough. I didn't know we were playing volleyball, Mr. Hassel. Take a look at this. Oh, no, it wasn't one hand. It looked like two from our angle. That was a spike, though. It sure, it certainly was. Good defense. You barely see the defender block his own man shot. So it's not a lot of on ball blocking, but that time the separation wasn't enough. That's a good point. It usually comes from the help. Yep. How? Pulls up and hits. It's a two point game. 2.45 to go and some more pressure. That was the most in rhythm shot he's taken, and the teammates around him expected that to go in. Therefore, he was in rebounding position. That's number four on Powell. He did grab the arm of Crumble. That's a good call. Good spot, Parker, because he absolutely did grab a Crumble. Not being communicated to. And Powell trying to get it from behind. You can see he beats Powell initially, but Powell doesn't give up on it. So now someone's got to talk to Crumble. No one does. Absolutely, that's a grab. Can't do that. What's Powell is playing with him? One and one Crumble. Hey, coming up next, CBS Sports Network hits the pitch. We've got some intense Major League Rugby action for you. San Diego battling Houston on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. It's the last of five college football games on CBS Sports Network today. And a good finish setting up. Crumple with a career-high 25 points. And his Creighton Blue Jays lead by four. Powell double team. Good look. Nice patience from Seton Hall. McNutt through the foul. Almost got that to go. And what that patience afforded Seton Hall was defenders running out at you out of control. And you can see how they're just blowing right by them. Creighton Blue Jays defenders having to reach and grab. That's four on Bishop. Again, Seton Hall has two extremely important players with four fouls, including McKnight. Powell also has four. Two free throws coming. And the first one is good. And you see the foul trouble for Seton Hall. Both Hall and McKnight are on the court with 2.23 to play. One more for McKnight, who Kevin Willard says is the hardest worker on the team, and it's not even close. Didn't hesitate, did he, when we asked him that question? No, he did not. Fans on their feet. It's a two-point game. Man-to-man -man pickup by the Pilots. Just to, to make sure his foot was behind the line. And I think uh, they've already figured out that he was behind the line. 
we're gonna look ourselves. Uh, looks like his right foot is on the line. Well, they're gonna give him three shots. Let's see it again. Oh, no. It's beyond the line. It's a good call. From the initial angle, hard to tell. First one is good. Brayton had a situation like this late in the Villanova game. Had three free throws to try to tie and take the lead. Only made one of three. Two for two so far for Miles Powell. It's tied at 56. One more coming to try to give Seton Hall the lead. He makes this. Are you Kevin Willard picking up full court, or are you Kevin Willard picking up at half court and allowing them to work it up? Token pressure. He's still in it. This tells everybody to head on down. Seton Hall by one here at the Rock. So important to defend with discipline. No fouls, no reaching. Don't bail anybody out. Blocking foul on Seton Hall. And it looked like Alexander was losing control and balance and about to fall prior to that foul. Interesting call there. You decide because, I, I, in my opinion, I thought Alexander was falling prior to even putting the shot up or looking at the rim. And then the whistle immediately followed. Wow. 76%. He'll earn one more and a chance to give Creighton the lead. High stress moments all season long for Seton Hall. Nine of the ten games decided by ten or less. Serve him well moving forward, though. All these tough battles will make you battle tested. Devin Lee changes. Seton Hall led by 12 early on in the second half. They're down one. Drive the ball. Powell jump stop. Gets the to see if there is any excessive action on that clear out by Powell, where it looked like he caught Alexander with an elbow. So Mike Roberts and Tim Cloggerty, along with Nathan Farrell, are taking a look. Well, here it is. They're looking right here. You decide right here. What's he do? No, he's just trying to swing the ball through and inadvertently catches Alexander. Now, that being said, I've seen innocuous fouls like that before called flagrants and guys get thrown out. So don't use me as a barometer, but my initial instincts, excuse me, as the official comes over. Nothing on the review. Official says there's nothing on the review. Standard personal foul. 
That sounded like the right call and looked like the right call. And now one and one for Miles Powell with a one point lead. Second in the Big East in free throw percentage this season. The guy you'd want on the line if you're Coach Willard. And he's six for six from the line tonight. Powell had just nine points in this game around the five minute mark. But he scored nine in the last four minutes. Got to shoot him eventually. One and one. Both teams with two timeouts left. Coach McDermott exercising one. Ten point seven to go. One more free throw coming for Miles Powell. When freedom is threatened around the world, when floodwaters rise. And wildfires rage. Wherever the fight, whoever the enemy, when America needs her best, she sends a soldier. Do you have what it takes? Find out at GoArmy.com slash warriors. A crate led by as many as six late in this game, but Seton Hall has come storming back. Thanks to Miles Powell with 10 points in the last four minutes. And he's got one more free throw here to try to make it a three-point lead for Seton Hall. <laughs> and now the foul. Another timeout from Coach McDermott. Wants to get all his players on the same page. But that also allows Kevin Willard time to get his defense set up. We're coming back for the final 10.7. Send him to the line for a one and one. Well, listen, I would now. If you'd asked me that question years ago, I would have said no. But teams have gotten accustomed to this game situation. College coaches practice it. They practice how to foul. It is no longer something that are, we are flying by the seat of our pants. This is something that has been planned and is actually a strategy for Team Q. Creighton needs a three. They're one of the top three-point shooting teams in the country. Fifth in the nation, 41% coming in. It is so important. I can't overemphasize this enough. Seton Hall cannot foul shooters. All you want as a defender on the perimeter is to get a hand up and contest. No open looks. You're not looking to block three-point shots. No timeouts left for Creighton. Oh, I thought he stepped out of bounds. It was close. But a foul is called, and Mintz will go to the throw line for a one and one. Take a look, and you decide where's that right foot? That right foot's out of bounds, right in front of us. I mean, you had the best look in the house. Yeah, but the officials did not call it, they didn't see it. They called it on Seton Hall. That's a big call. Mintz. 77.6% this season. One and one for Creighton. Down three, 7.8 to go. He's one of two from the line tonight. Missed it. Pop the rebound. Well, the basketball gods have spoken. Surely they saw that missed call along the sideline. And it has not been a good night for Davion's. He's 0 for 10 from the floor, 1 of 3 from the free throw line. When you talked about coming into this ballgame, what a good shooting team that Creighton is. Their good decision making, a result of their really good offensive execution. They have not shot the ball well here tonight at all. That has hurt them. This is 1 and 1. Again for Powell, who's 8 for 8 for mine tonight. He scored 11 of the last Seton Hall, 13 points. Get one and one. So Creighton going to be taking it and running it down if he misses.
so clutch. Appropriate or apropos that a guy like Powell is at the line now. Their main player, the guy that everyone in the other locker room, as we talked about, is trying to stop. He's been able to seal the deal. He has 13 points in the last five. It's Cash to Mintz. Finish the game 0 for 11. And Seton Hall is going to come back to win it.